but I have to tell you that I had a bit of a disappointing week all round. You know, all those glamorous film idols of mine. Oh. I hated it too. But anyway, we go on to tonight's show. Now, we'll see what happens when the borough of Lambeth pretend to be the Bronx. We'll discover why half-term is bad news for the animals at the zoo. And we look at the pitfalls of the mania that's sweeping the country, barbecuing. It was very really good, is, wasn't it? Yeah, it's Terrific. True. Anyway, I'm sure you're all sitting there pretty exhausted because you've had a week of thinking what to do with the kids at half term. So now you've got to spare a thought for the animals at the zoo. Because, you see, by taking the children to the zoo, well, it's every parent's answer to the half term blues, at least until they get there. And then they discover that children only really enjoy themselves if they can feed crisp bags to the gorilla, pull the llama's tail and ask Mummy, what are those monkeys doing bouncing up and down on each other? <laughs> to Chessington Zoo to see just what drives the animals wild. When it's half term, there's always one place you're guaranteed to find plenty of kids. At the zoo. And whether it's the orangutans, the lions, or the tigers, the kids all know which animals they like the best. Uh, the, the bears. The bears? The, the, yeah. Would you like to give a bear a cuddle? Yeah. Why? Because I love him. Mind you, their favourite game seems to be spotting family resemblances. Any of the animals around here remind you of anybody? Uh, the hippo reminds me of my name. <laughs> my mum reminds me of the gorilla. Well, that's not very nice, but your mum's very pretty, isn't she? She always scratches there. <laughs> <laughs> now, you may think the animals are in cages to keep them in, but come the school holidays, the real reason is to keep the kids out. Go on, clear off, sling it off! And there's nothing the kids like better than to get the grips with their favourite animals, as zookeepers know only too well. What's it like trying to do with all the kids here at half term? Very harassing. There are a lot of them to watch all the time because they tend to poke me chickens and jump on me ducks and anything that gets out and wanders around freely is liable to be pounced upon. You see, the kids love the animals so much they just can't resist slipping them the odd treat. In fact, they're so keen, they'd really like to take them home. We had a, a rock hopper pe penguin called Rocky. Uh, he was super, a super little fellow. He was hand-reared and loved everybody. And uh, one day, about 7 o'clock, we were locking the animals away, we, we discovered he was missing. And apparently, about 10 o'clock that night, we had a phone call from a sort of very distraught mother who was most apologetic. She found this penguin in her, her kid's bedroom. Uh, in, she'd actually taken it home in his sort of Fulham football bag. But being shrewd beasts of the jungle, the animals have come up with their own ways of dealing with the kids. What sort of things do the animals do to the visitors? Bite them occasionally. <laughs> do you enjoy that secretly? <laughs> yes. <laughs> they have to get their own back somehow, don't they? And Ben the hippo's got a surefire winner for getting rid of unwanted crowds. They're all going, oh, look at the hippo. Isn't he lovely, you see? But he backs up to them like that. His tongue's right there. And the barrier's not that far away and he starts going to the loo. And you know when they both go to the loo, they sort of shake their tails like that. Well, he sort of spreads it right along the <laughs> that way. But so many animals just don't seem to mind what the kids do to annoy them. You see, they're stars in their own right. Just give them an audience and they'll turn it on. <laughs> Seems like a nice boy. <laughs> the only trouble is some animals put on a show that mum and dad would rather not see. The pig tail with cacks. Uh, when they come into season, the females have a rather large backside. And the uh, little boy commented to, this, to his mummy, he said, Mummy, Mummy, what, why has that monkey got a, a big backside? And she said, oh, uh, um, well, it's, it, it's to sit on, it's a cushion. Uh, so he said, oh, oh, fine. And with that, the male uh, pigtail macaque le leapt on her and started to cover her <laughs> frantically, whereupon the little boy was 
oh, look, look, Mum, and the Mum was, oh, come on, Johnny, let's go and see the zebra, you know, and so, uh, how, I'll buy you an ice cream, but what are they doing? What are they, uh, come, 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 he said, well I, well, I know, I know what they're doing. He said, uh, he's pumping up her cushion. And the little girl just turned and said, don't be so silly, Alfie. Now, for sensitive parents, penguins are a much safer bet. No hanky-panky here, and you might even spot Chessington Zoo's brightest star, Pringle, arriving in his chauffeur-driven car. This talented penguin is a star of stage, screen and biscuit commercials. In fact, he's attracted quite a following, but like all big personalities, he likes his young fans to keep their distance. Mind you, it doesn't do to upset too many children. We had some young children take a penguin once again, um, took, took it down to the lions and the tiger's enclosure, and threw it into the tiger enclosure. Oh, did it eat it or what? No, they couldn't get the wrapper off. Jokes again, the oldies are the best. Actually, do you like penguins? They're all right. I remember a bloke back from the Falklands. I said, how do you enjoy it? Oh, he said, terrible. He said, uh, he said uh, drink, and he said, penguin milk. So what do you eat? He said, penguin burgers. <laughs> so what do you do for a leg over? He said, follow me. <laughs> <laughs> Mine came down the street with a penguin, and a policeman came up to me and said, oi, oi, is that penguin you got there? And the man said, yeah. He said, don't you think you should take it to the zoo? And the man said, I'll take it to the zoo yesterday. I'm going to take it to the pictures tonight. I've done some... Uh, in the past, I used to do a series before this, which I've had five people should remember. It's called 20th Century Box. And we had to... Let's hear it for 20th Century Box, folks. <laughs> and there was... <laughs> thanks. And there, at one time, they asked me to get in a cage with... with not a cage, but in, in a big aquarium with a crocodile. And I'll never get again. And there was one way in and one way out, and I kept his attention. I had to do this link to camera, you know, with an old dead chicken. I was waving the chicken. He looked at the chicken. I had to go around the back and go, well, folks, here we are inside. I'll never get the geezer saying to me, oh, it's all right. He said it was raised on milk. I said, yeah, mate, so was I, but I eat meat now, you know? <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's like when you're being taught to handle snakes the way you're taught to hold it, you know, behind the head all. as such. Except that I was so terrified, I was holding the snake so tightly that I almost <laughs> choked the thing, you know? I go potty. That was good, though. Our mum was once spat on by an orangutan in London Zoo. It was really funny. He had all this water in his mouth. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but you obviously survived very well, Sean. Yeah, Charlotte. just about... Well, look, thank you all though. very much indeed. They're going to put their masks on now because I have to say no, that that's your lot for this week. Did you know that tomorrow is the 105th birthday of the phone box of British Telecom? It's for you! you. See you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>